Welcome to Experienced Focus Leaders. I'm your host, Alex Shevalenko, and I'm delighted to introduce you to Alex Thiuma, uh, who is the co the founder and CEO of SaaS Talk. And in the SaaS community, Alex needs no introductions. But uh, Alex, tell us a little bit about um, uh, what SaaS Talk is, please. Uh, yeah, thanks for, be, uh, uh, for having me here, Alex. Uh, good to speak to another Alex uh, always. And, uh, you, you know, one that, that's been to many uh, SaaS stocks. Uh, but yeah, as you said, uh, founder of SaaS stock, it's been now running for, uh, well, the first event since 2016. But the business uh, was, was started in, in 2015. So we're going a little over eight years now. Um, so, uh, yeah, getting wiser, uh, uh and, and hopefully better at, at what we're doing and, and what is it that we're doing? Well, ultimately it's all around community, but, you know, for B2B SaaS. So we, we, we did start with, you know, community, uh, content, uh, community driven content, meetups, uh, you know, Slack channels, et cetera. Uh, and that led to us then putting on the first B2B SaaS conference in Europe, namely SaaS uh, which happens in Dublin. Uh, every year and that's kind of scaled up to now what it is you, you know roughly about sort of 4000 attendees uh predominantly you know more than 50% b2b saas founders a lot of their c suite team uh and and then investors uh, and and also then uh, i guess the uh, not only up and coming but the you know innovative and like saas uh, products and companies that want to sell to other saas companies so we have a large expo uh, part of it, both from you know the bigger companies and the unicorns that you'll you'll know and love, like you know G two or Intercom, uh, to the the the, the startup uh, kind of expo area. So yeah, doing that. The main event is in Dublin. We've also launched in the uh, US last year. Uh, that was 2023. So upcoming USA event number two is happening in May, uh, and we also probably lesser lesser known because we don't do as much marketing because all the marketing is really kind of consumed i would say mostly by the events uh mm -hmm. we we have a product called the sas founder membership which is like the easy way to describe it and if you know what these are it's like an eo or a ypo for sas but really we want to build the world's leading support organization for b2b sas founders so that they can come together uh you you know um uh, and have like a, a curated sort of like mastermind you know on a monthly basis build out a global network of founders that uh you know are a few steps ahead of them uh, and get the right education they need to scale to 10 million ARR you know and far beyond amazing well i i can vouch for amazing experiences that you create uh in dublin and um I know you're innovating across the range from digital to the physical experiences. And on the founder membership, I know you're also doing cool events where people go to places like uh, you make an offer you cannot refuse, like go to a multi coast, yeah. uh, drink uh, drink a lot of limoncello with uh, fellow we had the uh, best SaaS limoncello. founders, yeah, and uh, <laughs> and learn a lot right in yeah. that environment, which is yeah. you know authentic and open. So I think you're doing a great service to kind of the global SaaS community, yeah. um, where I think especially if you put yourself in places like Silicon Valley, you know, where it come from, like, yeah, there is there is already kind of an ecosystems there. There's like there is a lot of inside knowledge. You go anywhere outside of the valley, you know, you you basically even in Austin and Seattle and New York, right, that knowledge of like the, the concentration is not quite there. So you're creating this new hub that's kind of virtual and physical around the world um, with meetups. And I, I think this is amazing because uh, I think one of the things that I think the best SaaS founders do, they keep learning from each other, right? You mentioned Godard Ebel, uh, like mutual, mut um, where I think in a mutual admiration clap yeah. for Godard. Um, and he was a guest in this pod as well, where kind of, uh, I, I think, um, a, a frequent guest that you're, uh, your events and sponsor yep. your events and, and Godard, I think what what we probably both admire about somebody like that who's had multiple you know billion dollar exits, he just keeps learning. He's a learning machine. He kind of recommends, yep. uh, like shows what he's doing with conscious leadership, shares these things, and so you're creating this playbook for yep. startups around the world. Amazing. No, no, thanks. And I, but you probably said it better, uh, better, better than I, right? But great to hear that that uh, that user experience as you that someone that you you know attends and has been a part of the SaaS community is to 
to to how you you would describe it and yet like you, you know ultimately we are facilitating these connections and these learnings by you know putting on the events or or through the SASOT founder membership and you you know there is more to it but you say you know you get the right people there and the magic happens mm. but mm. there there has to has to be a lot of work behind that and then also the curation of the experience there so i think uh, and and this is a big thing uh, like for us this year like serendipity in events uh has been uh certainly like for good events almost kind of like part of the the strategy that like okay you just find a venue uh you invite the right people and you just le let the magic happen because everybody's under the on one roof right now if you're doing an event of three or four thousand people it can be you you all have serendipitous moments right but it, it can also be really hard to necessarily meet the right people for you that are you know the right value that are going to be maybe your future customers or investors so there there has to be more to that uh and something this year like for us we're, we're kind of internally saying and we'll soon be like publicly saying around serendipity being dead uh and uh and that we have to look more at the experience and you know facilitating these one-to-one -one connections which are probably the most useful things that people get out of the events uh so actually i'm very excited for what the the sas doc in dublin this year which will really be our kind of uh, first version of a, like a, a new product uh we're not like ripping everything out and, and throwing it away right it it it, it, it has been working but um you, you know it, it's also quite funny because if you think about uh, again, like I say, Sasox eight years old. The first one was in 2016. The the product has been a slow evolution, but a lot of what mm -hmm. uh, what happened there is still uh, there today, right? Obviously, that that core part of the product. But we're not like an event; it's quite slow moving and not not super innovative. And we're not like SaaS companies coming out with new features, you, you know, uh, every, every week or every every month. So I think we're long overdue uh, this, the industry is, but SaaS stock, we like to kind of try and lead the way, even though there are some out there that are doing it, you, you know, certain things better than us. Uh, so yeah, look, this year at SaaS stock, I'm super excited. There's going to be new products, new experience. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully that will make for the best one. Yeah. Well, and, and I want to vouch um, for uh, for how SaaS tech continues to innovate on a consistent basis. I think we... When we we're looking for our design partners, we we're very fortunate to work with kind of SaaS innovators like Salesforce on the one hand, and they kind of, but we were looking at like who could be in the SaaS industry who's smaller, has lots of amazing content. Uh, and so we were very fortunate to partner together with you, Alex. And one of the reasons I think you picked us in the first place and we loved the partnership with you is that. You have you you really care about creating a great visual experience at the event, around the event, creating you know you know wonderful opportunities for sponsors to look well and professional, and you know create something that's at the same time authentic. And I think you're right; it doesn't happen virtually like just by serendipity above yeah. a certain number. I think you're very deliberate about creating uh experiences you know from you know education before during after the event and so on so i salute you and i would agree that i, th I think the innovation in the event industry um is is not as rapid <laughs> as, as oh, like it, a SaaS product it, right it, like it, it sort of feels sta it, it's, stale it's definitely times. it's definitely not and probably the biggest innovation in the, in the event industry over the last 40 years or so was the invention of virtual events right and and uh, virtual conferences which then were obviously then it just exploded everywhere because it was really the only thing you could do during covid right and now we're back to in person that's kind of gone away and then most uh of these event you, you know um uh, organizers and, and companies who were excited about this kind of innovation and now go just going back to doing the same thing that they've been doing for, for for many years, right? So that that's kind of a funny thing about the biggest innovation is now kind of dead, right? But at least these things have kind of been tried. But um, but yeah, like we we are uh, cognizant of the fact that you you know we need to innovate, and you like obviously the uh, the, the the saying you know innovate or die. I, I I do believe in that, and I do believe that while SaaS stock is is great today, in the last you, you know eight years it has been great. 
that if we just continue doing the same thing that we're doing for the next eight years, that you you know we we probably yeah. won't be around or we will have plateaued. So I think like now is the time that you know we're really going to take you know the bit between our teeth and uh, you you know uh, innovate uh, in 2024. And so let's let's dive into your business a little bit and like so what are some of the innovation pillars around it like even right now right before giving away the full big secret yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But i don't want to give away it, everything yeah. yeah i don't have yeah, a whatever you drop we'll, we'll take but yeah. um but like i would say like a shout out to you like uh you're the the podcasting veteran with sas revolution show now being uh you know at f- over 400 episodes and you know it is an you know innovation and ongoing learning right versus yeah. like the the traditional paradigm of a one time it's it's kind of a re reinforcement of the community that you're building with guest speakers yeah. and and you know them sharing their expertise so um curious like what's what's that been like right and what advice do you have for baby podcasters like uh yeah like us well here? yeah look, the, the 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 podcasting i mean like the podcasting journey started in in 2015 and uh because i had the blog which was called Sascribe uh, at the time and that was community driven uh content uh, I thought, look, I may as well do a podcast, right? And I'd never done it. And, you know, there's a little bit of fear, imposter syndrome, because like, you haven't done it. And who am I to, you know, interview these people? And my first guest was Mark Reberge, who was the CRO at HubSpot at the time. So pretty good one. Uh, the, the Good timing, because and the way I landed him was he had his book out, right? Which the, the uh, sales acceleration formula, which is, you know, a must read if you're in SaaS about, you know, how he, he built out, you know, the sales team to get to a hundred million ARR with HubSpot who are now probably what, 2 billion ARR. I don't know the number, but you know, it's, it's pretty significant. And Mark is no longer there, but he, he's investing. He had a book out. So I was like, Hey, do you want to come on my B2B SaaS podcast uh, where, and we can talk about your book and little did he know he'd be the first guest. And there was obviously no audience uh, initially. Um, uh, but do you know what that strategically that really helped because actually, I think for about five or six years, that was the most listened to episode, was episode number one, right? And obviously, that grew over time because it's kind of yeah. like evergreen content. Uh, but I think to get that first episode as the most successful is because we had a fantastic guest. And so yeah. we kind of, uh, you, you know, leapt forward, you, you know, many years just by kind of landing, you know, high quality guests. And then on the back of that, because then I could refer, oh, we have Mark Roberge on it helped me land, you know, a lot of great guests, you know, in the first few months, Byron Dieter from Bessemer Venture Partners. Uh, we had, you know, Owen McKay from Intercom and so on. And there's just me, you know, in the bedroom, like going at this for a few months. But there was some like people that I could reference. And actually, probably an unfair advantage I had back then was nobody else was really doing yeah. it. I think there was one other B2B SaaS podcast. Now everybody, everybody's but doing it. But now that right? you're famous, I could go <laughs> after this episode and say, hey, I had Alex here on there this podcast. There we go. There we go. You gotta you gotta follow where the SaaS the SaaS yeah. leaders are. So podcast yeah. is one but, one um kind of area. You know, I'll kind of let's let's focus on the kind of the running of the business. So when you're running yeah. you, you know an event driven, content driven business right sponsors are the probably the biggest source of revenue is that accurate Cor- correct uh, yeah right. Rough, roughly around 70 percent it used to, used to be about 50 percent uh for the first three years but it, it, it's kind of you know grown into 70 percent great so i know that you guys are very thoughtful about creating a high velocity engaging experience for for the sponsors in terms of like, hey, here's their sponsorship portfolio, here's the portfolio, here's the options. You know, we've been very fortunate to kind of observe yeah. how you're innovating, integrating videos so that you don't say, hey, trust us, we're awesome. You know, you show what really happens, right? Like you kind of have very concrete examples. You give people time to, uh, you know, to save them time because they can jump to the areas that they care about. So, you know, how has that, you know, paid off, right? It sounds like it's a, it, it's, you know, a lot of, a lot of event businesses struggle with the economics of the business. Yeah. And I know, you know, SaaS industry has been going through a relatively tough spot, but you're yeah. continuing to put on a shows and like, tell us a little bit about more where you're innovating there on velocity or expansion. Yeah, yeah. Look, of I, I, I mean, I, I guess it starts and you, you sort of uh, made a, a bit of a reference there, but whether it's kind of clear to the audience, right? So, we, uh, 
in the sales process, right, where, where we think about experience. And again, if we look at like today, uh, actually most sales meetings, you know, are done over, uh, over Zoom or, you mm -hmm. know, online. Um, and we want to have a good experience uh, throughout that. Uh, and, and all of our uh, partnership and sales materials and decks, we, we run on Relay2. Uh, and there, as you said, like, you know, there may be, you know, videos that are uh, um, embedded, uh, like certain sort of like uh, navigation and user experience that we want, um, you, you know, uh, our, our, our potential or, you know, existing customer uh, on and kind of give them a, a little bit of a, a wow moment and a feeling that they're not just going through, let's say, you know, a boring PDF. So hopefully we get, you, you know, um, a, a feeling, a reaction uh, you know, something from that initial kind of user experience, which not only shows, look, we get it, we care, right? And, you know, we're putting like detail, not only, you know, in the decks around experience, but through to the actual physical event, you, right. you know, and, and we're backing it up by showing you now, you know, on the sales call, right? Uh, and people like, you know, if you go to the SASA website, it's the same, we've got a video or, or like we've got part, which is the, um, the SAS stock experience, uh, again, like people will kind of uh, see that and get that, and, and you know that's kind of run on on relay too. You can download the decks, but uh, you, you know it's also kind of nice when the the, the sales team uh, kind of run through that with you. But I, th I think that's all that that's all really helpful in that kind of like pre uh, experience. Then you know, let's say a partner signs up, you mm -hmm. know, in the run up to event. Sometimes it's twelve months out. Sometimes it's nine, sometimes it's six, sometimes it's two months like before, but then we support them, you know, with again, kind of the, the right materials and, you know, hubs for them to, uh, you know, get all the information they need about the event and what's going to be happening, what they need and maybe what they need to buy additional to the stands that they build, you know, the custom build stands that either we provide in a turnkey package. And again, we don't skimp, you know, on the expense there. So there's a really nice uniform look and feel. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. right through to uh you know obviously the custom booths that they may build themselves and spend mm -hmm. you know extra budget on but it's very important then for us you, you know that they uh you, you know i guess the whole the, the expo area you, you know has that kind of great look and feel and yeah. just matches their experience you, you know from start to finish uh as well you know on on top of then the service levels that we provide because look i know some I'm not naming names but some conferences uh that you know they'll sign up the partner uh and they will then probably like not really speak to them or like give them any service between the time that they've signed and given them the money to then the actual event itself and then it's kind of like it's it's over to you and, and not put any effort even into the booths right and how they look and feel but we're very much the opposite uh, uh around that so we do care about that we invest in that right through from things like relay to right through to the actual physical event itself yeah, and and I think um, you really, you know, the origins of Sastuck, right? If I if I read it correctly, it comes from your fa being fan of Jimi Hendrix and the Woodstock experience, and you the wanted to create name. this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah the yeah. the you wanted to create this rock and roll, uh, but like kind of memorable, you know, lifelong experience that you take away with you, and it does yeah. like that care. I I think absolutely goes throughout, right? Like you, yeah. You know what's the first thing you remember about the event? Typically, like like a wedding invitation, right? It's the invitation yeah. itself, right? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the stories we that you share about what you're going to have there, right? And you're, I think, you're being very you know, thorough from the event for the pre-event, the event, the post-event yeah. communications, and I, I think this is what, what the core theme for me that I, what I love is this is customer obsession. Right. You guys yeah, yeah. actually deliver customers. I, I'm sure people come back from year to year to year. I know I've seen the same the same yeah. sponsors now for for many years and uh, they keep coming back and you know sharing their stories and exhibiting. So tell us a little bit about kind of the um, was, is this coming from you and like Will and like the DNA that you just bring as as leaders yeah. or yeah, look, like, how I, do you I, select I, for this? I, th I think you, it, it absolutely has, I, I guess, you, you know, come from the very first SaaS stock, which has come from my DNA. I mean, look, I overinvested in that first SaaS stock. I had 12 months to think about it, which actually you don't need. If you're putting on an event like SaaS stock, probably six months is really certainly the go-to-market time. There, There is probably a 12-month cycle in some of the preparation, but you could put an event like SaaS stock together in six months. Whether it would be as good as SaaS stock or not, I, you know, I, I don't know. But that very first SASO, I overinvested and I thought about things like the beer mats and 
the branding of those, the flags that we would have there. Well, beer uh, match for, for Dublin, England. that's pretty important. You know, that, that yeah, is yeah, a... Exactly. <laughs> um, and, and you, you know, we had a pub out the back, which was also pretty important for Dublin. And then we ran, we, we run this, um, uh, like, founders retreat called SAS Society. So, like, founders over 5 million in revenue that is, you know, scaling to or want to scale to 100. Uh, the, the first SAS Society, maybe the first two years, we used to get the... Uh, I spent a lot of money on invites where we would get them like printed out on really nice paper. And then we had our own wax seal to, you know, kind of fold the the invitation. So it was like a, a wedding invitation, right? But uh, the, the SAS dot version. And again, like, well, we don't do that now, but because it also it's one of these things that has come off the P&L. But probably if, if I had my way, right, and if I wasn't managing the P&L, right, then I, I would get these kind of things through. But they, 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 they all add up, right? But I, I, I think that DNA, and as you, you also then mentioned, you, you know, uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Woodstock, uh, the rock and roll, we, we kind of wanted this to, uh, you know, still do this to not just be a boring B2B conference yeah. where you have meetings. We want people to have felt that actually this was more than that, that actually I've almost been to like, you know, a rock and roll event or a festival, you know, in Dublin, but it happened to be all, you know, SaaS founders. And I've had a great time and, you know, either maybe I'm like hung over or, I'm, you know, tired or whatever. Right. But I've had just such a memorable time beyond all the value that I've got from that. And and it comes from all of that, you know, attention to detail. So I think I think the DNA definitely comes from me, but is has been transferred through to the team to people like Will and Bracker and Joe and, you know, people that have been there for five, six years, you know, in the company and are, are carrying that and will hopefully, you know, carry that for, for many more years to come. Amazing. Well, one part of the DNA is that you also attract amazing, you know, um, lead innovative marketers, right? And then oftentimes the CEOs of companies that are either sponsors or just guest speakers. So what are some of the trends that you see in talking to the creme de la creme of the international SaaS community? And maybe like, let's divide it into the marketing teams, yeah. right? That yeah. kind of, and then maybe the their, their senior leadership that that comes to speak, whether they're marketers or, or somebody else. What, yeah. What what makes uh, for a great SaaS marketing team that you kind of observe from your interactions was was you know all the sponsors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a good question. Look, and also to be honest, that I, I'm not really speaking to that many SaaS marketers myself uh, the, these days. Like generally, I'm I'm more like you know helping out around the speaker front and you know getting uh, where we do have marketers as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, on the, uh, largely more on the founder side, and uh, I, I guess like the, the sales teams would largely be speaking with the marketers who who then you know uh, having the budgets. But I guess the question, like what what makes a great you, you know mar SaaS marketing team, uh, you, you know, kind of right now, uh, it, it's su it's super interesting, right? Because I think like if we look, and, and this is another trend, and you mentioned that uh, in the podcast that SaaS has probably been going through a bit of a hard time, or, or certainly. Over the last year, after the crazy times of 2020 and 21, uh, we're kind of resetting and going back to 2019, you know, kind of levels, but maybe a little bit above that. I think with that, the challenges for marketers have been that you, often marketing budgets are, you know, the first that are kind of slash. Yeah. And then like, you know, oh, the bu event budgets are slash, the overall marketing budget is slash. You can't buy the new technology that, you, you know, will help you. Uh, you, you know, uh, as a marketer. So they have to have a lot of, I think the ones that are winning, like a lot of creativity, um, they got to have a lot of resilience, right? Uh, I think to uh, obviously kind of uh, get through when uh, a lot of channels maybe are not available to them. Um, uh, so I, I think these are probably uh, uh, some of the things that, you, you know, we're, we're probably seeing, like also like the marketing team, like the, the CMO, uh, again, obviously, it, it's the top job in in marketing. It's also probably the hardest job. They're always the top jobs, are always the hardest jobs, right? And that's what you you hear. But but, like, but the, the CMOs do get the, fired quite a lot. <laughs> they they do they do the te yeah. the tenure of a CMO like people yeah. like SaaS companies or generally companies do not have patience uh, on the CMO, and I, I think it's it's tougher than a, a CRO or you know the the, the, yeah. the sales leader. Um, and they they tend to stick around less because they 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 they're getting fired. Um, so I think the secret sauce and what I've like we had um, the CEO of Muse.com on mm -hmm. on a recent podcast. They just crossed 100 million ARR, uh, and they hired a CMO 
uh, I think when they were around about 10 million ARR and luckily, or maybe it wasn't luck, right? And maybe it was brilliant or whatever. They got it right. That CMO is, I think, with them today, you know, five years later, they're at 100 million ARR, right? And I think it's that importance of getting that higher right, which so many of us do not get right. Uh, and similarly, I think, you, you know, Cognizant, and you might know James, the yeah. CEO mm -hmm. of Cognizant, you, you know, one one big part of their success of getting them to where they are today, I don't know if they're 50, 60 million ARR, was the hiring of uh, uh, Alice, uh, well, I can't remember her last name, but they're, they're CMO, right? And that's been pivotal. And so if you get that right, it can be so crucial for a SaaS business. But unfortunately, so many of us, you, you know, don't. Um, so, so yeah, uh, just some thoughts around that. And that may actually lead to the like CEO level folks, right? Because I think one of the challenges for SaaS CMO right now, I would say in the typical B2B business is integrating, you know, PLG uh, and kind of middle out type of motion, you know, where you have inside sales and then, you know, being able to expand that in the enterprise. And then there is like a lot of channels, right? You're one of the channels and then there's digital channels and we are a channel in some ways, right? And, and, and so I think the the mental mental complexity around keeping all that, you know, on a tactical level, while still being able to execute, pull up, and maybe have a creative brand strategy, because that's you know you're you're obviously you know big on creating a branded experience for your clients, so that's that stands out. It feels like it's just so many different personalities that need to be successful in integrating that, and the, just the depth of skill. And, you know, that so that feels like a challenge for any executive. But I wonder if you see, you know, particular kind of in SaaS, just given the variety of sales motions, that that's actually like almost becoming, you know, very hard for one person to contain all the multitudes. Well, what 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 I've seen and like I, I think as we know like you know when you when you start a SaaS business um, maybe it's true in other businesses but like this is where I've kind of learned about it in SaaS the keys to success and getting to like product market fit is usually really identifying that ICP right the ideal customer profile and then as you grow uh, often that 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 ICP can evolve and, and change, right? But typically with our customers over the years, I would say maybe up until last year has been that this is the person that we sell to. We sell to the CEO of SaaS companies that are between 100 or 500, or we sell to the chief people officer of companies that are between you know 50 and 200, right? And SaaS companies have been very clear on that. Now, Maybe because as the market has changed and people are finding certain budgets are closed and, and so on and so forth. I'm seeing now a lot of trend with a lot of our customers that we're selling to the CFO, but we're also selling to the CRO. We're also selling to the CMO. And like, you know, do you have these personas? And they're selling to multiple personas, which is then going to require multiple different types of messaging. And, you, yeah. you know, then for an event uh, as well, like how do you get all of these people there that your customer wants to kind of meet and you've got to give them like something for everybody and a real reason to come. So actually that's become a little bit more complex. Uh, uh, I, I would say for us. Um, uh, and it's and yeah, perfect maybe, opportunity, it, it, Alex. You just have three boosts for one company yeah. and uh, <laughs> you know, one for each persona. But it, it, it must be complex for them and the marketing yeah, teams yeah. that all oh, they've got all these different personas now that they're, yeah. you, you know, the SaaS company is saying, we've got to sell to all these people. And it's like, yeah. well, okay, maybe you've widened the pool, but then that really affects that you the, the types of marketing and the uh, persona based emailing and everything that you do and segmentation of your database and like all all these things that you need to do right well and, and i think that ultimately get gets to i think why we were drawn to each other it's like you want to create a personalized experience for for your customers right and so sometimes yeah. that means that you're you know it's hard to know right like yeah i could be a cmo but i could care about the end users because i know that's the problem or i could care about the roi because i know that's the biggest problem most likely i care about all but then like how do you help me go on a journey right that allows me to 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 have the right experiences and that's why your your events right like you help people discover the relevant materials you know that's why we, you know we partner together because i think the future in that complex world is partially like yes we can have targeted messages but then we need, also need to help people find their own adventure, right? And, yeah. and like give them that option. Um, 
Uh, any other tips that you know you have from pattern matching of what you see? You know, you you meet with all these CEOs, you interview them. You know, consider me a you know a, a, a sponge that wants to be yeah. you know uh, kind of uh, uh, absorbing all that. What, what advice would you give to kind of a CEO like myself that's on their journey to ten million AR? Like, what what are you seeing as the biggest kind of levers? Um, for, for us it, 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 it's a it's a really good question I, I think like one thing and i think you you know this and um uh whether everybody else does that, that that's kind of listening or, or kind of watching uh this that all of these uh people that you know the 400 episodes that i've done on the podcast and eight years of speaking to all the founders and ceos that you know speak at sas or whatever um all of the successful ones that have never done it on their own you, you know figured it all out by themselves right and it's kind of why SaaS stock ex exists. And it, it it sounds like it could be an, an obvious thing, right? But I, I know so many founders and, and there's so many smart founders in SaaS that uh, don't go to events, right? You know, maybe they're like, they've read all the SaaS. I heard it last week. I've read all this content that's out there. Like, I don't need to read anymore. But that person happens to be, you know, stuck at 2 million ARR, right? So it's like, well, surely there is... <laughs> There is more that you can do to kind of get out there, like be with other founders, learn about what's happening now. And you see like, uh, we, uh, you know, Goddard Abel, like we've, we've obviously spoken about him a couple of times and again, the admiration for him. He's a three, four time, you know, exited entrepreneur, you know, had a few billion dollar exits, uh, constantly learning and is surrounding himself with a support network of both you know CEOs and coaches and other people that he needs to kind of help him succeed. So I think it like it, it's very clear to me that like when when you get to a certain size and this could probably be you, you know maybe under 5 million ARR you really need to build that uh, support network around you both of like CEOs maybe executive coaches um you you know uh, I don't know the the, the CEO um uh, sort of like team uh, office or, or whatever right but uh, I, th I think I think that's that that's clear and that's what that's what's needed and so uh, definitely I would say um, that one and then look uh, you you've got to be it probably ties into that but super curious uh, really kind of you, you know um, focused and fixated on just learning because typically most people are learning as they go uh, and I, I think that that's super important and and then probably like lastly um, you know, customer obsessed, right? The customers hold the key to your success. And we, uh, I know you, you asked about like SaaS founders, but, you know, we're always talking to our customers. But over the last six months, we've learned so much from our customers, which is, you, you know, a big sort of reason that we are, you know, now innovating for, you know, the SaaS.2.0, which is going to come in Dublin. And if you don't speak to your customers, if you're not obsessed with them, then again, you, you know, you're uh, leading yourself down the wrong path, for sure. Perfect. So for all those curious leaders in SaaS that are customer obsessed, that are always learning, and that want to build out a support network, there is SaaS stock. Where can people find you and go uh, participate in this wonderful community that you've uh co-created with other leading SaaS founders? Yeah, well, the, the easiest way is to go to sas.com and then you'll see kind of, you know, the suite of events and content that we have and the podcasts and the sas.founder membership. So it's probably the best place, but people can also reach out to me on, on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm, uh, I think, Alexander Thuma on LinkedIn, if not Alex Thuma, I can't really remember right now. Uh, but generally, I, I'm, I'm sort of pretty active and responsive there, uh, less so on some of the other uh, platforms but um but yeah like e either of those we got sas.usa coming up may 13th to the 15th in austin going to be a great event like austin also you know thinking about uh customer experience we chose austin like after speaking to our customers and then visiting it and realizing like what a fun great city and the value that that's going to add to the overall conference and the same with dublin it's such a great place for the, our conference uh, which happens you, you know in october uh, as well so it, it's you know a big reason that i would probably but don't quote me on this but probably never do a conference in london because for me i just don't i've never been to a good conference in london it's too big you know you don't get that organized serendipity uh people just leave the event and get swallowed up by the city and you, you know i, th I think uh 
yeah, we've got to be sort of deliberate about these things. But um, but yeah, that's uh, so a bit of insight yeah, uh, there at the end as to why we chose Austin and Dublin. Amazing. Well, I hope um, everybody gets to experience the SAS Duck experience. And I think for, again, for all of those who also want to run their old event programs, you know, I think they could learn from you and the way you've deliberately created awesome events um, for your community. Uh, so Alex, thank you again so much for joining us, sharing your expertise and being a beacon in the, in the SaaS community for sponsors, for founders, for investors, keep up the good work. Thanks. Uh, look, it's easy to do when you found something that you love, right? And uh, so it never feels like a day's work. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep on uh, keeping on. Thank you.